This is the Jocko Underground Podcast, number 18, with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. All right, so I was got asked this like multitude of times, especially I was on the Jordan Peterson podcast a little bit ago, and I talked a bunch about writing, and I also talked about reading, and then obviously read the books for the podcast all the time, is what's the procedure look like? How am I doing this? What am I do- What's the procedure for reading the book? Mm. So there's also the procedure of selecting a book for the podcast. So I get sent so many books and then books lead to other books and then I end up with a lot of books. I get I have a lot of books now. Mm. And I can't read them all cuz I have more books than I than you know, we only do one pod, one Jocko podcast a week mm-hmm. and I have more books than that. Mm-hmm. So I got to figure out which book is going to be. So the first thing I do is I do an assessment of the book. Look, you know, somebody sends me a book from World War II, from Nam, right? From yeah. World War I, yeah. from the rep, from whatever. They send, you know, somebody suggests a book. I read about a book. You know, I get the, I'm, I'm doing research for one book and I pull the string on one of those books and I find another book and I look at the bibliography and I find another book and it's written first person, so you can see where this comes from. I mean, the, the books, the resources out there are unlimited. I have my default, by the way, my default mode is order it. That's my default mode, I'm gonna order it. But then mm-hmm. on top of all the books that I order, people send me books. Mm-hmm. So first I do a little assessment. I can almost guarantee you, I'm gonna open it up and read like the first page. And see what it see what see how it hits see yeah. how it lands. You can tell you can kind of you get a feeling right there. You're yeah. like, oh dang, I'm already kind of sucked into this thing. Mm. Then I know this might sound like spoiler alert, but I'll go to the end of the book mm. and see what kind of closing last couple pages like where are we at where'd this end up how's this finishing, mm. and then I'll start like looking through the book in the middle and start looking for. How is this thing written? And I'll look for a spot to read, you know, about maybe it's an actual battle, maybe it's after a battle, but I'll look for something like that. You know, I'll be looking for keywords as I'm scanning, I'll be looking for mortar fire, (laughs) right? I'll be looking for bayonets fixed. I'll be looking Mm -hmm. for stuff like that to find out what, and then I'll start reading that section and see how well it's written. And, And that's kind of, look, so many of the books are good. So many books are great, but I can't read them all. And so I gotta make kind of a decision based on that procedure right now, right there, the opening, the closing, and then sort of a sampling of the middle. And then, okay, so once I decide, all right, we're going in with this book, we're gonna do this. I Occasionally, I'll misjudge. I've probably misjudged five books so mm. far where I, Old, read the opener, read the closing, read a middle part, like, yeah, this is legit. And then I read it and I was like, well, you know, I got, let's say, 42 pages into it. And I'm like, no, I misjudged it. Put it on the put it on the other pile. Mm. Are you at liberty to say which ones those were? Mm, or? Uh, not really, but n- none of them were. No one sent me a book where I was like, oh, this is good. No, it actually. Right, like not. their book or yeah, something Yeah, no one's like no done anything like that. But I've definitely had books where some historical book. I can there was one book that I read that I really wanted to do a certain subject and I got a book that seemed like it would be right and I invested probably 50 pages into it kept waiting for it to and one of the key components was it was a it wasn't a first person book mm. so it was an account right it was a historical account which we've done some historical accounts but but if if there's enough first person accounts in the historical account then it can be used this one didn't have really much for first person no quotes you know lance corporal smith Mm. said boom and you got two pages of dialogue from lance (laughs) corporal smith getting it you know what i mean so that's so i've i've that's been a couple that i've walked away from you know midstream but Mm. generally i do pretty good Generally, I, I do a pretty good assessment. And so then what I do, then I read the book. When I read the book the first time, I'm go, I'm reading the entire thing, and I'm, I'm anything that's cool, good, impactful, meaningful, lesson, high, I mean, I'm highlighting. I have orange highlighters, by the way. Yellow, too light. Orange is good. 
I understand. So I go through with the orange highlighter, read it, and I'll, some, some books I'm freaking highlighting all kinds of, I mean, it gets, so I have to control myself sometimes mm-hmm. and pull back a little bit because I can get crazy with the highlight and then I'm thinking I'm just gonna read a freaking audio book here and just read the whole book, <laughs> don't wanna do that. So I, I'll highlight it, and, but sometimes I am highlighting whole pages. Sometimes I've just got two, three, four pages of a battle scene that's epic and I'm like, yep, I'm reading this whole thing, that's all there is to it. Mm-hmm. So I'll highlight the whole book. Then I kind of think about it, and um, as far as the podcast goes, as far as the podcast goes, then I'll, then when it's time to record the podcast, then I go through it again, and I go, and I have these red pens, these red like fine tip pens, and I'll outline and mark up exactly what I am actually going to read on the podcast, and then arrows that lead me to the next section and areas that I'm not going to read, and so that's how I end up doing that and I have like little marks for notes if I've got some note about something or you know they mention a general's name and then I got a note in there I use a bunch of stickies and all this crap Mm. but there's still something that's that's that I have learned I would say about reading and it's been primarily from doing the podcast which is how I'm actually reading the book. And I think I did this before, but I did it subconsciously. Now I do it consciously. When I'm reading a book, it's not really a book that I'm reading. It's either a story that I'm hearing from someone first person in my head, like I'm hearing this story, or oddly enough, it's a story that I am telling. So I'm reading it as if I'm telling the story that I'm the person that lived it, which is weird, right? So I'm actually reading this as if it's me and I'm gonna tell the story to you. Mm. Or I'm actually like in the mindset of I'm living what's on the page. (laughs) So that's to me is how I am really connecting with what I'm reading is I'm, I'm in that frame of mind. I also read, and I know this this actually is not good, I read at the speed that I talk just about, mm. which sucks because it takes me a long time to read stuff, mm. but that means that it when I'm reading it, it's like someone's telling me a story or it's like I'm telling someone a story, so it's more engaging for me in my brain. Mm. And then I have the overlays, right? I have the the, the conscious and subconscious overlays of extreme ownership of cover and move and simple and prioritize and execute and decentralized command and dichotomy. So I've got those overlays and so those things are, I'm I'm scanning for those things. I'm looking for them or I'm not consciously looking for them like, oh, that's cover move right there. Oh, that's, you know, oh, that's a simple plan. That's gonna work. I'm doing that. So I've got that additional overlay, that additional context to what I'm reading. And I'm also looking for outliers. So I'm looking for things that don't match up with my theoretical principles. Uh, I remember when I read one of Tilt's books and he split forces and I was like, dang, I don't know, this doesn't sound like a good idea. Yeah. And, and I asked him on the podcast, I said, you know, I'm, I, I felt weird asking him, right? Because I'm like, eh, it's Tilt, bro, you don't want to mess with Tilt. <laughs> and I said, hey, Tilt, you know, here you are, you're going in this jungle situation and you split forces, I said, I was, like, I was like, you know, I always kind of thought it was a bad thing. He was like, it's the only time I did it and it worked out horribly. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Thank you. Look, you, sometimes you do have to split forces, but you have to use caution when you do it. So I have that context of what I know, what I believe, then the outliers from what I know and what I believe. And, and when I say what I believe, th- th- that means it's what I believe, but I also realize that books can present questions to what I believe, which is awesome. Because if I get a question of what I believe, that's a positive thing, because now I'm gonna either learn more about my belief being correct, or maybe my belief is incorrect and I'm open-minded to that and I actually want it. Mm. So I have those overlays, and then I have the overlays of when I'm reading, how things fit together that I'm reading. And this is on multiple levels. In the book itself, when you're reading in a book, you gotta remember that that's a complete world, right? And that page, that section that you're reading is connected to everything else that's in there. And sometimes we get 
because you're you're detached from it and you turn the page, it's like we're not thinking about that anymore. Mm-hmm. So I consciously am thinking about, hey, this is actually happening in the context of this whole entire book. Mm-hmm. And then how does this whole entire book fit in the context of other books about this particular battle, this particular war, this particular situation? War in general, how does it fit in? How does this compare to the whole world? What's going on in the world? And then how does it compare to my world? What I've been through, what I've experienced, the knowledge that I have or don't have. And and what I'm looking for, obviously what I'm looking for is trying to find lessons, find new lessons possibly, relearn lessons that I've already learned, learned or reinforce the same lessons. And then all of this provides me with perspective so that I can more holistically understand human nature. That's what, that's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing. And you know, there's a, there's speaking of books, I was just reading a book and there's a quote in there from Otto von Bismarck, who's a German chancellor for three wars. And he's always, he's always in these pictures with these kind of uh, militaristic general uniforms on, you know, with the shoulder, gold shoulder pads, the big, all that stuff. I mean, he was like a reservist for a few weeks or something. <laughs> he, was not, he wasn't like, and he, apparently he was begrud- begrudgingly a soldier for a very short period of time. But, you know, once you're the chancellor, you're like, you know what? I want that freaking general outfit. Well, there's a uh, there's a book by B. H. Liddell Hart, who's a whole nother. We have a whole we have a whole library of books from him that he wrote. He was a really uh, profoundly impactful British military soldier officer, fought in World War One wounded, uh, sent back, sent back again. I mean, just, he, he went through a lot and he had an incredibly fluid mind and incredible understanding of military tactics. And I, we haven't even broached. It's one of those things where there's a couple of books right now I've got in the waiting that I'm wait, that I, I'm like, hey, when I open, when I go on this, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna take four, five, six, seven podcasts to do. And so I've got some of those books in the waiting right now. B.H. Liddell Hard is one of them. Um, But the quote is that I'm getting to (laughs) that I was reading in his book today. Fools say that they learn from experience. I prefer to profit from others' experience. So what does that mean? That means read. That means put yourself into the situation in the book so that you can learn from other people's experiences and you don't have to go through it yourself. So there you go. A little bit on reading. Yeah. Seems like that extends to essentially listen, right, to others. Cause yeah. So, so I tell my kids, like a little, I don't know, what do you call it, mantra? I don't know, whatever it is. <clears throat> what are the three, three, three things that make you smart? Listen, read, and? Rest. Can't listen and read and not rest. You gotta rest. Okay, fair enough. Um, actually, it's sleep. So the three things that make you strong are working Eat. out, eating good food, and resting. Things that make you uh, smart, smart is listen, read, rest, sleep. Sorry. Anyway, this is a thing I made up with my kids. I'm sure that look, it's not perfect, but I wanted them to sort of remember it. So when I ask them it, they can kind of recite it and understand. You know? Yeah. There, there, there's. I was trying to think of what you're missing, and and it didn't. At first, I was like, oh, that, that's legit, right? Listen, read, sleep. That's really good. Um, and then I thought, like, honestly, I, I started thinking, what about math, right? Like, I, yeah. I literally thought, like, what about math? Yeah. And so it's almost like, so that made me think, well, what can you say to someone that's yeah. short and concise that will also make them realize that they have to kind of learn and drill and practice? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the other thing is questions. Right. How do you get smart? You get smart by asking questions. Oh, yeah, huh. So those are good. I like, I like, those are good fundamentals for your kids. Yeah. They're it, very good fundamentals. You get a very good grade on your fundamental concepts for your kids 
on those two factors. Solid. Yeah, I felt like listening is one of those ones where it's essentially you're learning from others. Mm -hmm. What I had in mind anyway was listen to your parents, listen to your teachers, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I liked asking questions one for sure, which yep. kind of brings you back to listening because once you ask, ask the question, you better sure. start listening kind of sure. a thing, I guess, now that I'm trying to analyze it. But yeah, felt pretty good about it, I guess. Yeah, it's a good start. We'll say that. Like, And I don't mean that even in a... Even in a in a condescending, condescending way. Yeah. I don't. I mean, it's like a legitimate good start. Yeah. How do you say good start and and have it not be condescending? You just need to say that's a really good start. I don't that's know. A, you know what? That's a great foundation to build upon. Even that is a little bit yeah. negative, right? Yeah, most of them do, especially if you're paying attention to the idea that it could be condescending. Mm -hmm. They all seem pretty condescending. Okay. Even when you're like, I, you're I, just have to take I like my where you're, I like where you're going with that. Like, you know, yeah, even that, a, it's like it's a good solid start you got there. Just give them the full. Whenever props. I tell Dave, good deal, Dave. Yeah, whenever I tell Dave that he that I'm, he'll ask me like, oh, how was that? And I'll be like, oh, solid. <laughs> 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 he thinks that I'm. He thinks I'm. You know. Yep. He thinks that's a that's a C. That's a C plus. Yeah, and it, I told you this plenty of times. In Hawaii, solid means good. It's like yeah, excellent, yeah, essentially. Yeah, solid, yeah. Yeah, bro, that guy's solid right there. Yeah. Or or that was a solid job or whatever. It means excellent. Just yeah. a subtle difference. Yeah. Well, apparently in Carlsbad, California, it means like <laughs> marginal, marginal, <laughs> barely acceptable, yeah. in a vague way. Um, that's interesting how you like. You know, and you, you know what? Honestly, he's right with in some cases. Like if somebody does a bad job and I don't want to make them feel uh, self-conscious, which, which is going to worsen their performance, right? Yeah. I, they might be like, oh, how was that? I might be like, oh, it was, it was solid, man. It was solid. Yeah. But I, no, even less than that. They might be like, how was that? I'd be like, oh, it was solid. So I'm, I'm, I am doing what he's talking about. But yeah. usually with the context of Dave, I'm like, oh, that was solid, meaning Hawaiian solid. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Good. I mean, not like perfect. Nah, but yeah, it's not perfect, but it's freaking legit. solid. You got to just say legit. You got to yeah, say legit, legit, right, legit. essentially. Because solid is that. It's kind of like, hey, no one's going to fire you for this job that you did. It's kind of like the uh, kudos for a job done. Mm. It's like that. Oh, Rather not even than the well done. Not the well done. It's okay. like done. You, hey, you did the job, man. You get kudos you know, for solid. a job done. I don't know. I heard it once on mm. a show, but... I don't know. I don't know what kudos technically are either. Um, you you get like um, the human nature element. Like it makes you understand human nature to mm -hmm. read all these books and stuff. I always think of um, like while I'm listening, I always think of like the time frames, you know, and if it, and especially the Iraq guys, like the where the where they're the stuff that they went through was during a time that I was alive, mm -hmm. and they'd say the date, and I remember like I remember exactly what I was doing on that time at mm. that time on that date or whatever and i get to realize like and you were doing this while i was freaking <laughs> here at home watching this show or whatever and so it puts that into perspective and it almost gives me like a, a little like a like a weird almost like a gps location of where i am you know in this whole freaking thing in the context in the context exactly it's weird man but yeah man it's crazy cool Check. Check. Um, well, we do have questions some questions from the interwebs. All right, <clears throat> first question. That is a little excerpt of what we are doing on the Jocko Underground podcast. So if you want to continue to listen, go to jockounderground.com and subscribe. And we're doing this to mitigate our reliance on external platforms so we are not subject to their control. And we're doing it so we can give you more control, more interaction, more direct connections, better communications with us, strengthen this legion of troopers that are in the game with us. So thank you, it's jockounderground.com. It costs $8.18 a month. And if you can't afford to support us, we can still support you. Just email assistance at jockounderground.com and we'll get you taken care of. Until then, we will see you mobilized underground.